Welcome to the NFL Trade Show on FantasyAlarm.com for week 11 of the NFL season. I'm your host, Ray Flowers. You can read more about all these players I'm going to mention in the article, but let's go through some of them quickly in this really snazzy video because I look really good in my sweater today. Quarterback position, Ryan Mallett, Zach Mettenberger, Sean Hill. Not interested in any of those three. They're all QB2s. If I had to choose one, it'd be Mallett. The reason why? The weapons he has to work with. He's got Andre Johnson on one side, DeAndre Hopkins on the other. Johnson is still capable of beating defenses, even though he doesn't get in the end zone anymore. Uh, you know, he's 7 to 10 targets kind of weak guy, someone you could feel mildly confident in starting with the big-armed mallet. And then DeAndre Hopkins is surging the last couple of weeks, in particular, last three weeks, 318 yards as a receiver. Mallet, strong arm, can make all the throws. Problems at times with pressure, problems at times with his progression. But he does have that arm, something that Ryan Fitzpatrick simply didn't bring. So those three guys, he'd be the one I want, though, again, keep those expectations muted. Running back position. Do you know that Arian Foster, on a per-game basis, in a PPR setup, is the number one guy in fantasy football this year at the running back position? He's better than Matt Forte. He's better than DeMarco Murray. Again, per game. And that's the problem with Peterson. Injury, injury, injuries with him. They keep little things, keep popping up, nagging him. It's a groin issue right now. The groin issue is supposed to be healed by the bye week. We don't know if it is or not. He still may or may not play in Week 11. That makes Alfred Blue an immediate add in all leagues. He is still available. We don't even know if we're, uh, excuse me, if Foster's going to play this week. But if he does, there's always a chance of an in-game aggravation. Alfred Blue should be on someone's roster. Justin Forsett. Oh, Justin Forsett. Two, 20 carries, 112 yards, two touchdowns, a great game. Lots of problems, though, as we come off that Week 10 effort for Forsett. In Weeks 6 to 9, didn't score a touchdown. Weeks 6 through 9, four games, didn't score a touchdown. Weeks 6 through 10, five weeks, he caught 10 passes. This is supposed to be a guy that's a great pass catcher. So for a five-week stretch, he averaged two receptions. For a four-week stretch, he didn't get in the end zone. The Ravens are on a bye this week. He is coming off his best game of the season. Sell Justin Forsett now while you can. Concerned about his ability to be an elite performer the rest of the way. He's been dynamite to this point. But very concerned about him moving forward. Darren Sproles. I don't understand this. Now, I, I guess I get it for the casual fan. You see him returning kicks and doing all these things, and he's explosive into that Chip Kelly offense. But let me drop some knowledge on you that should tell you why you should be selling Darren Sproles as soon as you watch this video or read my article. Number one, Darren Sproles has four rushing attempts in his last two games. Four. Number two, he has five catches in his last four games. Did you hear that? Five catches, four games. Sell Darren Sproles immediately. Just no workload there. Vincent Jackson is not Mike Evans. And I say that because Mike Evans the last two weeks has exploded. He's averaging 125 yards, getting in the end zone three times, I think, in those, those couple of games. Just terrific for Mike Evans. But Vincent Jackson, his arrow's on the way up. Even with the change from Glennon to McCowan, we still saw a massive target total for Vincent Jackson. He's caught 14 passes the last couple of weeks. And then there is this. In four of his last five games played, at least 12 targets. You can't have that many targets week after week and not be productive. Jordan Matthews. Oh, Jordan Matthews. Everyone loves Jordan Matthews. Mark Sanchez is going to be the next superstar at the quarterback position. Just ask around. I don't buy that, even though he looked pretty solid in week, his first week under center. Here's what you need to know about Matthews. He has been underutilized all season long. He averages about seven targets a week. Can't be an elite receiver for getting seven targets a week, number one. Number two, eight of nine games. Eight of nine games. Let me say it a third time. Eight of nine games, he hasn't gotten to 60 yards. 60. That's not a good total. He hasn't done that in 90% of the games he's played this year. One game does not make any player the connection he showed with Mark Sanchez. Clearly, it was a good one. It's very heartening. It's very exciting. But if someone thinks lockdown wide receiver two, Jordan Matthews is the rest of the way, sell him. We have one game to prove that's the case. Cecil Short's going to step forward until he's hurt. Just how it goes. Allen Robinson's done for the year with the foot issue. Shorts is clearly the guy now. You've got Lee and Hearns there in support. But you look at the last couple of weeks from Shorts, 10 catches, 159 yards. So that 5-catch, 80-yard, that's an area he can live in, folks. He can be a really good wide receiver three the rest of the way if he can stay healthy. Shouldn't be on waivers. Can't fully trust him. But you should be buying on Cecil Shorts because of the opportunity he has. And then finally, three tight ends. Vernon Davis, terrible. Nothing to see. 24 yards a game. Two touchdowns and seven. Seven outings. This is a guy who scored 13 times last year. Why am I suggesting you buy on Vernon Davis? 
because he costs nothing. He's on waiver wires, folks. I'm getting questions. Do I, you know, go with Charles Clay or Vernon Davis? You know, do I pick up Zach, uh, Jermaine Gresham or Vernon Davis? Go with Vernon Davis. Tremendous talent. I think he's playing hurt. I don't know if you get anything out of him the rest of the way, but he's worth the opportunity. He's such a dynamic talent. The second guy, Jordan Reed, he's dealt with his own injuries. He's healthy now. Redskins coming off a bye. No one's excited about that because you forget about a player if he's coming off a bye. You want to buy Jordan Reed. I really think that RG3 is going to reinvigorate both Pierre Garçon and Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed is going to be a tight end one the rest of the way by Jordan Reed. And then finally, Kyle Rudolph is the guy everyone wants to buy this week. I don't think you should buy him over Jordan Reed, to be honest with you folks. The last 11 games that he's played, Zach Rudolph has had... Uh, Zach Rudolph, I'm talking hoops. Kyle Rudolph... Jeez, I did that the other day too. Kyle Rudolph, four catches, 37 yards, .3 touchdowns. That's his average the last 11 games. 4, 37.3. Anyone excited about that? Now, I know Rudolph should be the red zone threat. I get that. But we haven't seen it. North Turner was supposed to revitalize the Vikings offense. Haven't seen it. Rudolph himself didn't perform early this year. Maybe it was because of the groin issue, the issue that caused him to miss all the time and have the surgery. Maybe he wasn't right physically at the start of the season. But he didn't produce early in the year. Cordero Patterson he hasn't produced at all. You know, Teddy Bridgewater, he's okay. He's a rookie quarterback. What do you expect? So I think people are spending way too much energy and interest in Zach Rudolph. If he's on your team, fantastic. He could be a tight end one the rest of the way. But I'm thinking he's not the best player of the three guys I listed here. He's the guy that I'd be selling because everyone is so excited about him, even though he's proved absolutely nothing, just like Vernon Davis and Jordan Reed this year. Just something to remember. I'm Ray Flowers. This has been the NFL Trade Show. We do this every week for week 11 was this video. Had a lot of problems talking today. I don't know if you noticed or not, so I'm going to go lick my wounds. I'm still going to post this video because it was fantastic. It's the Oracle that did it, but I'll try to be better next time. Don't forget to visit NFL for all your NFL needs here at FantasyAlarm.com, uh, including free player rankings. Free. Yeah, you might want to check it out. FantasyAlarm.com. I'm Ray Flowers. Talk to you all again soon.